Hey, this is Chris Tiroff, Traverse Creek Incorporated. Today we're going to talk about a little bit more serious stuff than we have in our previous content. Uh, a lot of our focus in our local shop is chainsaws. I have a lot of guys come in and they're asking us for firewood and farm and ranch type chainsaws. We sell Echo and Husqvarna, so I've got some uh, pretty good experience at uh, working on these and looking at them. So. I've formed my opinions about what I think is the better saw in that segment between the two brands and uh, I'd like to share my opinion with you guys today. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the Husqvarna and the Echo offerings for their farm and ranch and firewood style chainsaws. Um, the Husqvarna line really, they, their, their big farm and ranch saw is the 455 and the 460. I have a 460 in stock here today. The main difference being between the 455 and the 460 is just a little bit more displacement on the 460. Um, Echoes, and th these retail for I think 579, give or take a little bit depending on the size of the bar. Now with the Echo, you've got the uh, CS590. Retail on those start at $399. Um, and this is their main firewood and farm and ranch saw. And today we're going to talk about the differences between those two and also uh, why I think the 620 is kind of the best bargain inside that price range. So first what we're going to talk about is the differences between the CS590 and the CS620. I, the only one I have in stock right now is the PW which has the full wrap handle. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the 620P outside of the full wrap and I think the oiler line's a little bit longer on this so you can run it on its side. Um, so the CS590 is kind of like the price point farm and ranch and firewood chainsaw. It's a great chainsaw for the money um, and it's got a split magnesium crankcase, 60 cc's or like 59.8 cc displacement. Um, but there are some significant upgrades with the 620 that I think make it worth the extra 150 bucks, give or take. Um, so we're going to go over those. The CS590, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, you could check our older video about uh, me going over it. But um, so here, here's some of the main differences between the 590 and the 620. So the 620 has an aluminum wrap handle instead of a plastic one. It has a uh, metal clutch cover with captive bar nuts, and the uh, CS590 has a plastic one. The CS590 has a one-ring piston. The 620 has a two-ring piston with a little bit more aggressive cylinder porting on the inside. It has a bigger carburetor. It has a, a little bit better ignition coil. Uh, the muffler's different. I'm not sure what the detailed difference is in the muffler. And then also you get a solid bar with the 620 instead of the laminate bar. And then you also get a rim sprocket on this one, on the 620, as opposed to the spur sprocket. So the 620 for another $150 is going to give you more performance and more durability. And you're, you're only talking like $150. Bucks. It's like you take this and you wear the bar out on it, and you're already halfway there. If you break the handle on this one, it's going to cost you another $120 to get to an aluminum handle. If, if you ever wanted to change into it or another 80 bucks to get to an aluminum handle. So it just makes sense maybe right up front and take the hit and buy the, buy the better one uh, right from the start. Another major difference between the CS590, the CS620, and the Husqvarna is that the CS590 and the CS620 both have a vertically split magnesium crankcase and the Husky 455 has a uh, plastic engine housing and a clamshell design uh, cylinder and, and, and crankcase. The main difference between the two is that everything is the way that um, the crankshaft is actually uh, put into the housing. We have another video about that and the difference. I think it's called the Husky 130 versus a Husky 394 or something like that. But almost all professional saws across the board are going to have the split magnesium crankcase design. The bearings are press fit into the case and then subsequently press fit onto the crankshaft itself, whereas on the clamshell, this, and then everything bolts to the magnesium crankcase. So you've got this you know, hunk of metal that's central to the whole chainsaw and everything kind of bolts to that. And uh, the, the 455 and the 460, they use this clamshell engine design. So this whole engine housing is actually plastic. And then you've got the cylinder 
and four bolts that go up through the bottom here and sandwich the crank uh, the crankshaft bearings and then that holds everything together and then everything bolts into plastic most consumer saws and uh, like the prosumer kind of like this style saw in Husqvarna and steel are, are, are built in this style but all their professional saws are, are using this style so that's a big reason why the 620 to me is a better chainsaw than the 455 and 460 it's actually a professionally built chainsaw it's commercial grade whereas the 455 is still kind of consumer and we're going to look at that whenever i pull this up here so the 455 and the 460 have been in the market for forever i mean they're a proven chainsaw they're very reliable i hardly ever see any issues with them at all um, on repair work typically what i get is the fuel line uh, breaking uh, where it goes into the tank and then also the primer return line uh, breaking right at the end where it goes down into the tank and then also uh, sometimes I see the uh, the oil or worm gear stripped out on them but typically you don't see a lot of problems with these saws they're pretty much reliable they're proven they're, they are a good chainsaw if you're dead set on Husqvarna but I just think that between the two um, there's no comparison in that price range that the Echo is definitely a better machine. Like I said, you've got the plastic engine housing uh, on this one versus the split magnesium crankcase. you got the metal clutch cover here. You also have a metal clutch cover here with a side uh, adjuster. you got the dual felling spikes. you got an aluminum handle. you got a plastic handle, one spike here. Um, I think the power output for the 620, the stroke on this thing's longer than this one, so you're going to get... Uh, a good bit more torque out of it and then the other thing is, is this has a uh, solid uh, bar on it with a replaceable tip and then this has the uh, Husqvarna um, laminate bar they're both the same price point but I just think the build quality is going to be better on this and then the warranty straight up with this one is with the 620 is going to be five years with the uh, Husqvarna it's going to be um, two years and then you can buy up if you buy three cans of the the mixed fuel up to a five-year warranty um, which is still a great thing because uh, I recommend the canned fuel anyways and you'll end up you know you're getting something when you buy that warranty it's not just like hey you got to buy into this ex extra warranty you're getting the canned fuel for the same price you would anyways but uh, yeah I mean that's just my opinion if somebody came into my shop and says hey I got a lot of firewood to cut or you know I own I own a farm and I need a, a, a good powerful reliable chainsaw um, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to them about the Echo, as opposed to uh, the Husqvarna. Obviously, if you come in looking for a Husqvarna, I'm gonna hook you up. But uh, if you're coming in asking my opinion, it's gonna be the 620 every day of the week.